Speaking of Jesus, this is the 4 a.m. edition. I'm Curtis Clements. I'm glad you could join us. Speaking of Jesus is a program where we are eventually going to go 24-7, whereby anybody out there can call in and we can talk about our favorite subject, Jesus. We also have a website called speakingofjesus.tv. On that website, you will find resources on the subject of Jesus, how to know him, why should you believe in him, Jesus in Islam, Jesus in the Jewish question, and all other topics that related to Jesus. And we're updating that regularly, so come back often. I will be adding, we will be adding videos all the time, new resources, apps, any kind of question you have, we're going to be covering it. So we're very grateful that you joined us today. Today, I have with one of my great friends, Tim Flanker. Tim, how are you today, brother? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. It is. It is today, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's 4 a.m. It is today. <laughs> yes. You know what? What? I first, let's talk about when I first met you. I first met you at an outreach, and we will play this video during our two-hour segment here. Yeah. On Love L.A. Love L.A. was a seven-day, 24-hour-day outreach in Los Angeles that we were all part of in the fall, about 300 of us or so. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Tim, I met you because you were in the room that we shared, four of us. Okay? Correct. Yeah. We were living quite a Spartan lifestyle at this mm -hmm. mission center, and yeah. you were below me, and I would edit the video yep. because I was doing media for that. And Tim, you would be out all night, practically yep. every night. Yep. Yeah, I was. And sometimes, you know, if there was no outreach, Tim's going to go out and evangelize anyway. Yeah, regardless of somebody wants to go with me or not, I, my, one of my favorite activities to do is just simply share the love of God with people. And you know what? I really love talking to a very diverse group of people. Because it's, you know, just because I'm, I'm originally from Iowa, but I love meeting people. Like, just today, I met somebody from Bolivia. I met somebody else from Brazil. And it's like, I don't meet just normal people like that when I stay at home sitting on my couch. But when I get out of my, uh, my home, when I go out of my comfort zone, and I just begin going around talking to people, sharing with people, asking simple questions like, Hi, my name's Tim. What's your name? And asking, where are you from? What's some of your background? Tell them, everybody has a story and asking people, what's your story? Because when, when I share my story, it gives me an opportunity to speak into somebody's life. And my favorite thing to talk, talk about is the simple truths of the gospel. I'm talking about the man, Jesus Christ, the one who went up to that hill. He went up to that tree. He died. He was crucified. He spilled his blood. And it's the blood of Jesus that offers redemption for our sins. It's the blood of Jesus that covers us, washes us. He, he make, the scriptures say he makes us white as snow because each man that was born was born with a sin nature. And you have to understand that in view of, of a very big God, the creator of the universe, the one who spoke the world into existence, when you are in view of a great big God, you realize how small we are. But he created each and every one of us specially and uniquely. And each one of us has a unique purpose for being here or not on earth. We weren't here by accident. We were here because we were created by God. Everybody has a special identity, a special gifts and talents that he's created each one of us to have. And when I think about those things, I'm like, I just love going around and people are like, so, so what's some of your gifts? So what are your, some of your talents? What, are you, what do you love to do when you're not just at work or spending time with your family? What, what is it about life that makes you excited? What is about life that makes people come alive? make life actually worth, worth living for. Just earlier, you could say Friday night, because it is Saturday morning, but just last Friday night I was out, and uh, in a typical college area, a lot of people were going down to the bars and hanging out with friends and doing what they do on a Friday night. But as I was down by the bars, I began running into some people that you might call down and out. The very first guy I, I approached, he was just sitting down. Um, there, I mean, there was a bar behind us, and there was people inside drinking. But I saw this man. He was sitting down on the sidewalk, and he just seemed really out of it. Like, like not just in the sense that he was drunk, but it's just in the sense, sense that he was depressed. And I, and I stopped for the man. There, even though I was in a crowd of people and there was a lot of people around me, I stopped for the one that was, he looked out of it. And I asked him, what, what's your name? What's your story? What are you doing here? How did you wind up here? 
And as he began to share with me a little bit about his life, I, I looked him right in the eye, and I could tell just, it wasn't prophetic or anything, I could just look right in the eye, and I could tell that in his right eye he had a cataract, and he was completely blind in his right eye. And so I stopped, and I, pray, and I said, can I pray for you? And he's, at first he's like, what, are you crazy? Why are you even talking to me? But I was like, no, I'm like, I can tell, you have a cataract, cataract in your right eye, and you're completely blind. I'm like, can I pray for you? So I, so I did. Now, in the moment, he did not get healed from his blindness. But I was able to stop, stop and talk to a person that nobody else would pay attention to. Because I love God, I love people. And I love talking to the least of these. Because when it comes to the kingdom of God, it's not just... A, we don't just share a, 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 we don't just share the gospel from the place of we love God, but God loves the least of these. Because the reality of the gospel is when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't die for the people that were just simply doing well, doing okay, already had a job. Like, no, he died in each for and every one of us. When I think about the entire population of the world, the world global population right now is around 7.3 billion people. That's a lot of people on this planet. But to think about up in heaven, there is a loving God that created the universe and he desires to have relationship with human beings. Because out of all the created order, we are the only ones in creation that bear the image of God. And when I come with that perspective to life, I realize that God loves each one of us so uniquely and specially. And I was thinking about about Love LA and how the first time I met Curtis, and he always made the comment, I'm like, boy, you're always out on the streets. You're always sharing the love of God with people. What, what makes you want to work? Because I was working, I don't know, 16-hour days? Oh, at least. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I, no, I, st- I would stop and sleep, but when That's I was awake, <laughs> I would wake up in the morning. I mean, keep in mind, I would per- I'd stay up maybe to 3 a.m., so... When I say morning, that was closer to about 10 a.m. Right. Grab a shower, get something to eat, and then I was back out on the streets. And what I, th- what I realize is when I'm sharing the love of God with people, it's just like worshiping God. You can worship God through song, but you can also worship God through the life that you live. And for me to evangelize, when I say evangelize, I'm just talking about sharing about the man Jesus Christ. The reality that he was born of the Virgin Mary that he lived, lived a perfect life because he was fully God and fully man. You know, when I think about the Father in heaven who sits above the heavens, he's enthroned, and I think about my life here on earth, I could pull up a lot of excuses and say, well, God, you know, you don't know what it's like to go hungry. You don't know what it's like to be stuck out in the rain. You've never been naked. You've never been drunk. You don't know the sin life or the temptations that each and every one of us have. But when Jesus, or when God the Father sent his son, Jesus, born of the virgin birth, Jesus was, had the opportunity to face every temptation that every other man did. And yet he lived a sinless, blameless life. And he was on earth for about 33 years. We don't know the exact number, but it was around 33, let's give or take. And at the end of his life, in order to walk in obedience to the, fully, to the fullness of the calling that was on the life of Jesus, he had to go up to a cross. He had to die. He had to spill his blood. He was arrested. And it was because when Jesus was doing his ministry, he was doing ministry with 12 guys. There, and there was nothing special about the 12 disciples. You know, because when I think about how Jesus chose his 12 disciples, it wasn't like he was out looking for the most educated, the brightest, the most educated people who were, had special gifts or talent. No, he just picked ordinary, average, uneducated. They were fishermen. They were, in today's world, they would, they would be the blue-collar workers, you know? And he chose, the, he chose the average, he chose the ordinary to, to prove the point that he can work with anybody because he is God. Yet Jesus was fully man. You know, isn't that something amazing? It really is, Tim. You know, when you think about that, and sometimes 
you know, I look in the mirror and I say, God, you've got to be kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have those moments. Yeah, of time. absolutely. You know, what we do is say, yeah. what are you, me? Come on. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's what the Apostle Paul said. He said to the Corinthians, you know, none of you were of noble birth. No. Oh. You know, you were, you were uh, of all sorts of even debauchery backgrounds. Yeah. And he said, yet you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were called. And God says those things which are foolish in the eyes of the world are esteemed in the eyes of God. That's and that good. which things are esteemed in the eyes of God are foolish to the world. And he does that to take the weak things of the world to shame the wise. And he takes that which is dishonorable to show his honor. That's true. And really, what's the secret, Tim, to that? It's just surrender. Yes, absolutely. Because the, the thing about surrendering your life to Jesus, you got to understand, when I say the word salvation, it, it's, it involves doing two things. First, you have to repent. Salvation begins with repentance. And then the second thing you have to believe, you have to believe in God. Because it says, in order to receive salvation, you've got to repent and you've got to believe. But what are you believing in? I'm like, Buddha doesn't offer uh, redemption for your sins. You know, the man, uh, Muhammad, when he died, he went to a grave, and then he stayed there. You know, you look at, uh, you look at Buddhists, they, they worship, a, what, a thousand gods? I mean, they have a god for each little thing that is created. But we, li we believe in one god. And he comes in three parts. You got the Father, you got the Son, and you got the Holy Spirit. You know, you got the Father who's the creator of all things. You got his Son, Jesus Christ. And then you got the Spirit of the living God. Genesis 1 2. Genesis 1 1 is, it says, the Lord spoke the world into creation. And then in verse 2, it says, the Spirit of the Lord hovered above the waters. So you got to understand that when we talk about Holy Spirit, he's been here on earth ever since the world was created. Mm -hmm. And with the creation of the world, it says the Spirit of the Lord hovered above the waters. That means I can go anywhere on this planet, and I'll just run dr dr smack dab in the middle of the power of the living God, who is in mm. the form of a spirit. You know, and that, those are just deep realities and truths. And, it's, and then people like you ask me, well, Tim, why do you work so hard? And I'm like, when you understand how much God did for me, how can I not share the love of God with people? You know? And I think that's just good news. Amen. Yeah. That's Amen. Great news. That's great. Now, I don't think I ever asked you quite that, but I yeah. just was, I just loved watching you, Tim. Yeah. It was thrilling my soul. You know, because I, I really, part of me, I had to do editing around the clock. Oh, yeah. And I was up till like three, two in the morning. And I'm thinking, I'd really rather kind of be out with the guys, you know, yeah. out on the street, yeah. you know. But the Lord, one time I wanted to do that, and the Lord said, No, son. You, you sit and edit because a lot of people are going to see this because you did what you did. I, yeah. And that's why I understood that. But what I'm trying to say is, when we're, and you know, we're going to play a Love L.A. clip, by the way. Yeah. I'll play a synopsis of that when we'll take a break, and the people will get to see what we were talking about for that 24-hour, uh, uh, seven-day outreach in Los yeah. Angeles last fall. So we'll play that clip somewhere in the segment with you on our program today, uh, this morning here at the wee hours. Yeah. So we'll do that. But like I said, every time I get up, I says, Tim, Tim hasn't even come back. I would go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, I'd be <laughs> yeah. up you know, two in the morning, edit, upload, go to bed. Six o'clock, sun's coming up. No, Tim. You know, yep. he's still <laughs> up. <laughs> and I don't know if I need to go send a search party out for Oh, was good. No, you were good, man. You, you said, you know what? I'm going to sit around here. There's nobody to preach to. You know, I got to yeah. go out and preach the gospel. Why? Because the love of Christ compels you. That's absolutely right. And that's why I've always liked to be around you, Tim, because, you know, I say, you know, I, I got a lot to learn from being around Tim. Because yeah. the love of, of Christ compels you. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Because as you got to understand that as you grow in your identity of the Lord, first of all, you got to realize that God is the creator of all things, and he created you uniquely and specially. The psalm says that the Lord is the one that knits you together in your mm. mother's room. And, he, and at the birth, at, at, even at conception, before you're even born, at conception, the Lord is just like piecing together just a masterpiece that it's each and every single person that was ever born. And we're all uniquely, specially gifted, wired. And like God, God has just given me that natural burden. Ever since I was a little boy, I love Jesus. I love God. I'm in love with the Holy Spirit. Tim, can I, can yeah. I stop you right there? How, as a little boy, yeah. were you grown, did you grow up around a, a Christian home? Or? Yeah, I mean, my parents loved yeah. Jesus. They loved Jesus. Yeah, but how did that happen for you as a little? How old were you? How old were you when that happened? When uh, you... 
when I was five years old, my mom was my Sunday school teacher growing up in the church. And so she would talk about heaven. And when I heard about heaven, I was like, oh boy, that sounds like that, a... That's re- for me. That's for me. Yeah. But when you're five, year old, five years old, heaven sounds a little bit more like Disneyland, <laughs> you know? And you just get this picture of like, boy, I want to go to heaven. I'm like, mom, can we get some plane tickets and take a little trip? <laughs> take a little vacation to heaven, maybe. That sounds like a great experience. So I'm, when I was five years old and I, and I gave my life to the Lord, and I was like, can we go to heaven right now? Because the way she described it to me, I was like, a place that there's no more pain, you get resurrected bodies, you know, I'm not, you know you're not, no longer in this body, you're in your heavenly body. And I'm like, I'm like, wait, no more pain, we're getting new bodies. We're going to live forever. We're going to be with Jesus. The streets are paved with gold. There's going to be pearly gates. There's going to be angels and things flying around us. I'm like, let's go. Why wait? And I'm like, like, no, you got to wait a little bit. Because one thing is about the life that we live here on earth is the things that we do on earth will echo in eternity. Because you got to understand about me is I think each man, in the Psalms it says, the years of a man's life will be 70 years by reasons of strength. That's Psalm 90, verse 10. And Moses said that, by the way. And when he said that, he's like, you got 70 years, 80 if by reasons of strength. But when you realize that life, how short 70 years is, actually, it is you realize that I, I'm like, because some people are like, oh, I got 70 years. Let's go play golf, drink a few beers, have fun with my friends. Who cares, right? But I'm like, no, you only got 70 years. Let's make the useful use of our time. Like e- each week I plan out my schedule and I'm like, I got 160 hours this week. I'm like what's the most useful time I can have over the next seven days, the, the, the next 168 hours? I'm like, I plan out my schedule carefully and I'm like, no, I'm like, and my, at the top of my priority list, I got spending time with the Lord. Time in the Bible. Mo- monthly, I, I, do on, I do a three-day fast every, at the beginning of the month so I, can, so I know my heart is attuned with the things that the Holy Spirit wants to do in my life. I, you know, I, I spend time working on my schedule because I know that when I schedule my time, I'm going to be more diligent. I'm going to have more usefulness. The, the, and, and I've noticed that the people around me like me better when I spend time with Jesus. I don't know. I'm like, but when people don't do that, people don't realize that. But when you give your life to a disciplined lifestyle, I'm talking about the spiritual disciplines. I understand, like, there's, in the natural realm, there's the physical disciplines. And I think we all know, like, if I was to say, if you, give your, if you join a gym and you give yourself to an uh, exercise routine, if you give yourself to a healthy diet, and you start taking vitamins, you shouldn't be surprised that in the next few months, you begin to feel more physically healthy. Well, the same is true with the sp- uh, spiritual disciplines. If you begin to read your Bible every day, if you spend time in prayer, if you go out and... and do an outreach, evangelize, and I, I'm just talking about sharing the love of God with people when I say outreach. If you do those three things, go to church on Sunday, fellowship with other believers, you shouldn't be surprised that within a few months, your entire life looks different than you did, b- did before. You're, physically, you feel better. Spiritually, you feel better. The people around you like you, be- like you more. I've noticed that. That's always a great benefit. But it's coming to a greater reality of how much God love, loves people. And, you know, and when you think about those things, you just realize how good, new, how good of a news the gospel really is. Don't you think so? Yes, you know, and it's almost like you have to have a revelation from God to understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, it says in Corinthians, the natural mind receives not the things of God, and yeah. they're foolishness to, the, uh, to those who have not been enlightened by the Holy yeah. Spirit. But yet, Tim, you talked about being enlightened at age five. Oh yeah, and you and you know that that was a work of God. That was yeah. not just a kid, you know, wanting to go to Disneyland. That got, was a real work of God. Yeah, you got to understand that when a five-year-old <clears throat> received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they received the same Holy Spirit as the as the forty-year-old adult does. 
It's, it's, it's the same Holy Spirit. There's no Five junior year, Holy Spirit. There's no junior Holy Spirit. <laughs> right. It's the, same, it's the same God. It's the same Jesus Christ. It's the same Holy Spirit. Whether you're five years old or you're 60 years old, wherever you're at in life, the blood of Jesus offers redemption for anybody. So for me, I was, I'm so glad that I gave my life to the Lord when I was five years old because hmm. that meant that when I was growing up in my teenage years, I could spend time in my Bible. I could great, gain wisdom and revelation from reading the Word, from going to church, from fellowshipping with other Christians. It spurred, because one verse in the Bible says, consider brothers how we can, can, how we can spur one another on to, Lord, to love and good deeds. Because when you fellowship with other believers, just like we're doing right now, mm-hmm. when you just talk about to other saints, you can spur one another on to love and good deeds. And when I th- say the word spur, I mean, you think of a cowboy, you got, who, he's already wearing boots, but on his boots he'll attach a little piece of metal with little uh, pointing things on the end. And then when he gets on the horse and, he's, and he kicks him in the side, it doesn't take much to train a horse. Because you know, at first, when you first break in a horse, you've got you to gotta work with them a little bit to, to, so he will learn the commands. But once you've trained a horse, at first you've got to spur him. But, after, but once you've already trained him, doesn't it only takes but a light touch and that horse will get up and start running you know so it's good yeah tim um you run an outreach just tonight you know one of the things that uh yeah i really enjoyed talking to you about was you said to me you know i don't like to give testimony sometimes that are more than a week old yeah that's true <laughs> and i said i love that you yeah. know because Look, we can go back several years. You go back oh. several years in the Lord. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, but yet we can pull something out that happened 10 years ago, but you like to talk about mm-hmm. what happened in the last week. Yeah. And you even went out tonight, Tim. Yes. You were on a, how many hours were you out on that outreach? Well, six? Was that a four, six hour? Outreach? It was a five hour outreach, but I, actually, I did actually two outreaches last night because I love Jesus so much that I, I, before I, because I, I led an outreach from 9 p.m. till 2 a.m., but before I did that outreach, because I love Jesus so much, I was like, why not? There was another outreach earlier on in the day from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. So I, I, I did two outreaches back to back. And it was, and in that 10 hour period, I saw, I got to pray for people. I, I, keep in mind, I approached people that I wouldn't normally talk to. These are people that anybody else, probably, if you saw them on the street, you would keep on walking and you wouldn't even notice. But I was able to talk to people that I wouldn't normally talk to. And when you engage people that nobody else would talk to, that's when the love of God just shows up in a real and tangible way. Because you've got to understand that, yes, they are hearing the love of God, but I, get, I receive just as much joy as they do. Because hmm. it's, it's, it's a, to, to evangelize, to tell others about Jesus— it's one of the most rewarding things that any person can do. So I'm like, and, and it's, in my opinion, it's addictive too. Once, I, I mean, it may take a little work at first, but once you've le- led somebody else to the Lord, it's so addictive that I'm like, can I, I'm like, because after I get done with my outreach, I'm usually like, hey, can, I'm like, what do you guys want to do now? I'm like, I want to go preach the gospel. I'm like, I think I saw a 7-Eleven over there. Let's just stop in, get some, get some drinks, get some soda maybe, and... Uh, you know, share the gospel with the person behind the cash register. Because I'm sure that whether I'm at a gas station, I go into a restaurant, I'm pretty much positive that if I run into a, a human being who has breath in his lung, has a pulse, I'm going to talk to somebody who either needs a word of encouragement, maybe just uh, taking time to pray for people. Because I'm like, God is son, got to understand, I know I don't just talk to people who need Jesus. I also talk to people who already are, are in love with Jesus. But when saints run into other saints, we can always encourage one another. Every person I run into, all of us need prayer, regardless of we're a pastor of a church or we're, we're the bum on the street begging for money. Every person I talk to, I'm like, you need prayer. Because prayer is just simply communing, communicating with the creator of the universe. And when you talk to the big guy, the, the, the one who sits enthroned above the heavens, when you have access to him, 
Like, you want to share that with everybody that you see. I mean, how could you not? Don't you think so? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm having I'm having so much fun listening to you share. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's good. You know, it's good stuff. Wow, Tim. Yeah. So tell us what happened in the outreach today. Can you give us one story? Is there something that uh, stands out that you'd like to talk about? Oh, absolutely. Um, earlier today, I was I went to a shopping mall. It's an indoor shopping mall in uh, Independence, Missouri, and I was with my friend Gene, and just a dear saint in the Lord, and. Uh, we approached this guy. I saw, because it was, I was with my friend Gene, and I'm like, Gene had never been on Outreach me with with me before. I've I've met her at church a few times, but I was like, let's just go out. I asked her some basic questions, like, where are you from? What's some of your background? You know, how, you know, tell me a little bit about your family. And then we went out, and then, me, and then right when she was about to ask me, so how do you evangelize? I looked over and I saw a person standing there. I approached him. To, and I, when I say approach, I mean I walked to a person and said, "Hi, how are you doing?" And and they kind of looked at his son. Like, right. I'm like, "What, what are you selling? <laughs> what? <laughs> are you trying to sell something? What's what's going on?" And I'm like, "Oh, my name's Tim. What's your name?" And I'm like, "What's what? What's you, like? What do you want from me?" I'm like, "No, I don't want anything with you." I'm like, so I asked him like. Do you got any spiritual beliefs? I'm like, that's one of my favorite questions to ask people because, mm-hmm. like, I'm like, so what do you believe in? I'm like, are you? Would you consider yourself a spiritual person? Do you got any religious background? Like, would you say you're Christian? Are you Buddhist? Are you atheist? Because you never know what people are going to say. And I, and and as I do this, I hear some of the strangest answers. But anyways, I was talk. I was in the mall. There was a guy sitting. Actually, he was sitting down in the chair, and I was like. So what's going on? Uh, and, and I asked them th- those, those questions I just shared. I'm like, oh, you know, what's some of your spiritual beliefs? Are you a religious person? What, how would you describe yourself? And he grew up in the church, and at some point in his life, he, he decided to leave that church and go over to uh, Mormon, Mormonism. And I was like, what made you switch? And he's like, well... You know, it's the you get that knock on the door with the men in the white shirts, and they make their nice little sales pitch, and so you go along with what they say, and you know you get you get ordained into their little church. But he said at some point he just stopped going. Like going to church is not really worth it anymore. What what's the point? So he stopped going to church altogether, and I'm like, but when I was asking him about spirituality or spiritual questions, I'm like. It sounds like he, he had knowledge about the Bible. He had knowledge about different things. But he didn't... But I was like... So I, I, I kind of stopped him in his questioning. I said, if you were to die... If tonight was the last, last night you were to live, and you were to die tonight, I'm like, first of all, do you believe that there is a heaven and a hell? And if there is a heaven and if there is a hell, which one would you go to and why? And, you know, every person I asked that question to... The majority of them, it's like, well, I'm going to go to heaven, of course. And I'm like, why? And it was like, well, I'm a good person. I don't, I, I'm like, I don't steal. I've, de- I've never killed anybody. I don't steal. I'm like, yeah, you know, and I was like, I, I, you know, but it's, you got to understand when it comes to the issue of salvation, the Bible says you got to do two things to be saved. You, first, you have to admit that you're a sinner and you have to repent of your sins. Two, you have to believe you have to believe the, in God. I'm talking about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You've got to repent, and you've got to believe. Believe in God, the, the, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, Jesus Christ, the one who went up to the cross, the one who spilled his blood, the one who died for the sins, the blood of Jesus that offers redemption. And as I, and as I was talking to this man, I just naturally... Because well, cause one thing I do when I talk to people is while I'm talking to them with my words, I'm also praying for them in my spirit. And I'm asking, Holy Spirit, yeah. what are the words that you need to say yeah. to this man? What is it? I'm like, Holy Spirit, you know, you know this person. What are the words that they need to hear? And because he had spent time in the Mormon church, I wanted to make sure that he understood what the Bible stood. So I just launched, and he was open to receive so I just launched into a little gospel presentation, 
I said everything I, I've been saying to you, Curtis. I'm like, I, I, believe in, I believe in the Bible. I believe that there is a creator of the universe. I believe that the man Jesus Christ, the one who, who died for our sins. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I believe in, the, in this bu the book, the Bible, the one that we read. Because when you read this book, you gain wisdom and revelation. Insights into how life was lived from the beginning of time through the time of Jesus. And at the end, you got the, and you got the last book, which is Revelation. The things that are going to come yet. Things that haven't happened yet, but things are going to come at the end of time. Because Jesus came onto this, onto this earth. He lived a very real life. But then after he, he died and ascended, ascended into the heavens, he said, I'm coming back. I'm coming again soon. And at the second return of Jesus Christ, that's when the end of all things will come. And that's going to be a beautiful thing. On it me. is. You know, Tim, yeah. as I get older, yeah. you know, I've got a few years on you. Uh, it's okay. But I certainly don't have anything in the zeal department on you, bro. <laughs> and it's certainly uh, your, your love for Jesus. I learned a lot from you. Yeah. And I'm glad to be around you. Thank you. But one of the things that I'm looking forward to, yeah, I'm, I'm 55. Yeah. I'm 55. I bet your dad's 55, right? <laughs> Yeah, she's closer to 65, but it's okay. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, me but, I, but yeah. Thank you. No, but I really, not that I don't want to finish my, my days here and do everything God calls me to do, but that, you know, you yearn for that, and you see the problems in the world. I mean, you know, I, I remember as a kid back in the 60s listening to the newscast, you know, the Arab-Israeli conflict, the same old, same old. I mean, here it is, you know, 40, 50 years later, and I can almost hear the same newscast yeah. all over again. Wars and rumors of wars, you yeah. know. I mean, the world is a tinderbox right now. Yeah. We're just as dangerous as it was in 1939 right yeah. now, you know, with what's going on. And yet man has no answer. Yeah, no. Nope. They call this peace process. Well, what's that? That's yeah. more the same, right? Yeah. But there's not going to be any peace till the Prince of Peace returns. Correct. And, you know, folks, look, you can believe all you want politically, right, left, or indifferent. But the fact of the matter is we need a return of Jesus Christ. And he promised it. And that time is coming near. Yes, it is. We're, we're near. It's coming soon. It's coming very soon. You know, yes. we have more people alive today than there were in the last, uh, since, you know, the dawn of history. Yeah. And the whole population explosion. I was reading, listening to a fellow just the other day talked about turn of the century. We had, you know, you know that, uh, a billion or so. I'm even earlier yeah. than that, not turn of the 20th century. But anyway, yeah. it's late. I'm getting my, my dates all messed up. But nonetheless, it's been an exponential, incredible increase of population. Correct. And yet we've seen incredible evil. You know, we had uh, our brother Roger Hill on a little earlier, and he told all sorts of stories about uh, what his life has been yeah. like, you know, growing up around yeah. Satanism and, and some horrendous things. And here you are, the polar opposite. You grew up in Sunday school with yep. your mom teaching you the Word of God. Yep. <laughs> but yet here we all are together with yeah. our various backgrounds. And yet we're going to enjoy each other for eternity. That's true. You know? And, and that's what's so awesome. Jesus is returning, you know, and I don't care if you're rich or poor or anything like that. Look, the bottom line at the end of the day is you're going to have to make reckoning with Jesus Christ and who he is. So um, anyway, that's what's going on. Well, we have all kinds of things going on in the studio here that's kind of laughable. But uh, anyway, hey, appreciate you all out there, TV land. Yes, I know. <laughs> We got uh, yeah. so we hours in the morning, so we have some of our staff who's just uh, yeah. taking a little snooze here, so we just bless them. And, yeah. and <laughs> well, anyway, Tim, so back to the subject at hand, you know, yeah. the second coming of Christ, brother. Yes. The second coming of Christ. Yes. That is the history. That's going to be the culmination of all that the history turns to. Yeah. Is Jesus' return. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I, look, I think of that often now. You know, I want everybody, you know, I wish, wish everybody would instantly get saved, repent, and, and, and hear the good news, you know? Yeah. But I know that's your heart, Tim, and you work relentlessly at that end. Yes, I do. But, you know, because it's at the end of the age, Jesus is coming soon. But one thing I, I'm just burdened with, you know, some people say, well, well, Jesus is coming soon. But how do we know for sure that, Je that Jesus is coming back in my lifetime? I'm like, well, you got to understand. Because when it comes to the issue of end times, I'm like, how do you how do you know for sure that we're in end times? I'm like, well, by the by the time your life ends, I'm not sure if because it's debatable what, whether or not we're in the end times right now, which I believe we're in. Jesus is coming soon, but I'm like you. But it's like you're in your end times. Either Jesus is coming down here, or you're going to go up there. 
and you're going to have a face-to-face -face appointment with the creator of the universe. And the question that burdens my heart is, are you ready to have a face-to-face -face encounter with the living God mm. who will judge you for mm. the life that you have lived here on earth? Ooh, that's a certain point. And because it's, I mean, I want to see Jesus. I yearn to see Jesus return to the earth. But the question that still burns inside of me is, are you ready to have a face-to-face -face encounter with the creator of the universe, the one who sits enthroned above the heavens? Because he's going to come back, and he's going to judge people for the lives that they lived here on the earth. And it's not just, well, I was a good person or I was a bad question. The question is, he's going to ask is, did you know me? Hmm. Did you read my Bible? Did you actually do what you read in the Bible? Yeah. Do you love me? Yeah. That's a sobering yeah, thing, too. it is. You know, because even at, at the end of uh, the age, when he separates the sheep from the goat, he says, yeah. well, Lord, didn't we uh, do many miracles in yeah. your name? And didn't we uh, uh, cast out demons? Yeah. And he said, away from me. I never knew you. That's so true. What does that mean to you when he says, I never knew you? That's pretty so. And yet, it seems like you can have all, do all the church stuff yeah. and even do it successfully. Yeah. I mean, even to the point where you're seeing miracles in your ministry. Yeah. Because it's Matthew chapter 7, and in the middle of chapter 7, he says, At the end of the age, many people will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? Did we not raise the dead? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not do, perform many signs and wonders? And the, Jesus said to him, Depart from me, for I never knew you, those who practice lawlessness. Yes, lawlessness. Yeah. Doing religious things without the direction of God is called lawlessness. Yes, because you've got to understand that it's not, we don't earn our salvation through works. The, at the end of the age, at the end of the day, the question is not, is not, can we prophesy? The question is not, can we raise the dead from the grave? The question is not, can we cast out demons? The question is, do you know God? Do you love God? Does he know you? Do you know his name and does he know your name? Because you got to understand, not everybody was born a birth the first time, but were you born again the second time, the second birth? Because the Bible also makes clear that... The Bi yeah, <clears throat> the Bible makes clear that... In order to, we know we got self, we earn our salvation through repentance of our sin and believing in Jesus Christ. And then in the Revelation, it talks about there's going to be a book called the Lamb's Book of Life. And unless your, your, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not going to enter into heaven. But when you are born the first time, when, you're, when you came out of your mother's womb, just because your parents gave you a name, that does not mean your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In order to get your name written into that book, you have to do what I've been talking about. You have to, re you have to acknowledge you're a sinner. You have to repent of your sin. Salvation begins with repentance. And you believe in Jesus Christ. And when you do those two things, first of all, there's a great celebration in heaven. There's angels, angelic beings that are all over the place. And it says whenever a, a person who is in desperate need for God and he turns from his wicked ways, he repents of his sin, and he believes in Jesus Christ, when he earns salvation, there's a, the angels celebrate in the heavens. That's when your name gets written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then after we get saved, the Bible goes on to talk about baptism. And John, the, when John the Baptist was here on earth, he baptized people with water. But when Jesus came on the scene, he goes, although John did baptize you with water, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ooh. Spirit. Because it's the yeah. Spirit that gives us power. You know, when I, when I first got saved when I was five years old, I'm like, I mean, I love God. I, and I gave my life to Him. But I did not begin speaking in tongues immediately at five years old came a little bit later in life. Because the Bible says, 
John baptized you with water, but I will baptize you with Holy Spirit. And then later on in my life, when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and he came to me with power, that's when I saw even more anointing and even greater works than these. Even though I believed since I was a little boy, when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, oh boy, it was a whole different story. All of a sudden, I, I could speak with boldness, with power. I had the authority now to go places that I didn't have before. Like on just like this past Friday night, I was able to go down to the bars, and there was I was I wasn't tempted. I wasn't. It's like oh no, can't go down there. I might stumble into sin. I was like no. I'm like I I'm with Christians. I I'm using wisdom. I'm going with fellow saints, and we're going to rescue people that are destined to hell. Because in my quiet time, I'm like, Lord, I pray that you would plunder hell and snatch people from the gates of hell so that we may populate heaven. Because I, I make that my mission to live every day. As I think about the calling on my life and the things that I walk out on a daily basis, you know, sharing the love of God with people begins with walking obedience in the Lord. And to, in order for, for me to fulfill the calling on my life, I have to walk in obedience to the things that God has called me to do. And it's understanding how much God loves us, how much God created. When He created us, He created us for a relationship. He desires to have a relationship with his people because i mean yes he created the birds that fly in the air and yes he created the fish that swim in the sea but he loves to talk to us you know and he just des desires to have a relationship you know it's just like w maybe when you meet a girl for the first time maybe when you w met your wife for the first time and you started developing that dating relationship right. it wasn't just like i'm like well that that's a nice looking person i'm like no i want to get to know that person I, I, it's not like, oh, if you, if you want to get married, I'm going to force you to go on to dates. I'm like, no. When you meet somebody and there's that natural attraction, it's like, no, you want to spend time together. It's not, like you're, it's not like you spend time with your family because somebody's forcing you to spend time with your family. I'm like, no, there's a natural desire to spend time building relationship with people and building relationship god works exactly the same way because when you're in love with, with the heavenly father you naturally do things because you you realize that wow this is so enjoyable this is so all those other things i used to do i no longer want to do because i realize how much the father in heaven loves me is that good news that's great news you know yeah. tim i'll give you a little bit of my testimony that i don't think yeah. i've ever shared with you before you know, when Christ came into my life, um, I was, you know, hanging around with drug people and all that. And yet, I was able to put down drugs in two weeks after coming to Christ. Yeah. And, you know, it's like there's been no desire to go back to that. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it's a funny thing. I had a cocaine dealer come over, right? Yeah. And he put down probably, arguably, $2,000 worth of cocaine in front of me. Yeah. And said, hey, I found what you want, man. And I said to myself, you know, I, I, I had Jesus come in my life a couple of weeks ago. Where were you all these years? Yeah. And all of a sudden, they come out of the woodwork and want yeah. to give you drugs. <laughs> all, you know, and they never would, you know, when I didn't know the Lord. Yeah. They tried to tempt me, and I said, I don't want that in my life. That's yeah. garbage, man. Yeah. And you're right, because something greater. It's not just trying to be good. It's, it's letting him live his life through you. Yeah. And you experience that. Yeah. You experience that heavily. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, and I, I, I just... Uh, uh, I, I'm just still intrigued by some of the stories you're starting to tell. You got another one? <laughs> Oh, I got all kinds of stories. Well, what about, I mean, this is fresh bread. This isn't uh, 10 years ago. This no. is like this week, you know? I mean, past 24 hours. All right. Yeah. Look, you've gone from a week to 24 hours. All right. Yeah. Hey, pull another one out before it tells. Tell some other one that happened to you. And listen, you can stretch if you're on 24 hours. I, yeah. Do what you want to do. Okay. What's the Lord telling you right now, bro? You know, one thing um, I've been doing lately, I, on Wednesday nights, I've been doing this over the past two, uh, two months just to get, just to put the story in context. Past two months, I've been going down to a halfway house, and uh, there's a group of, of of men, about thirty guys, and the majority of the people in the room have done hard time. I mean, I'm talking about convicted felons, murderers, uh, people they people have committed armed robberies. 
I got one guy, he did 16 years for human trafficking. You know, just horrible stuff. But on Wednesday nights, I've been going down to the halfway house, and I'm there just to simply present the truth of the gospel. And, I mean, recently I had the opportunity to share my favorite topic, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because when I read in the Bible, I see Matthew, I see Mark, I see Luke, I see John. And when I read the four Gospels, when I study the life that Jesus lived here on earth, you know that there used to be a little bracelet, it was WWJD, and it stood for what would Jesus do? But I, mean, I think about that, and I'm like, do you know what, anymore? I'm like, that statement it kind of bothers me. Because the question I ask myself today, I'm like, I don't know what, what would Jesus do, when I look at the Bible, I say, what did Jesus do? W-D-J-D. What did Jesus do? And I read the four Gospels, and I look at the life of Jesus, and I ask myself the question, when Jesus walked on the earth, what was it that he was doing? And do you know what I see? He, he healed people. He talked to people. When he was in his ministry, he, he wasn't sitting in a nice, luxurious place. Do you know who he was? He was a vagabond yeah. who went, he, he grabbed 12 guys. He lived with community with 12 men, and he went town to town, place to place. He was sleeping in other people's houses, in, in other people's homes. He would go town to town. Maybe, I, I don't know how often Jesus actually changed the house, but, but he was always, always vi going into other people's homes. And they would take him in with hospitality, give him some food to eat, help him along his journey. But Jesus, when he was doing his ministry on this earth, he was a vagabond. He would just go house to house, place to place, talking to people, all pe people from all kinds of backgrounds. He talked to prostitutes. He talked to uh, some of the people that he talked to. I'm like, back then they had tax collectors. The lowest of the low in those days were the tax collectors. Because they do, it's not like the IRS that try to follow the law. In those days, they were pretty crooked in that society. They were crooked. They're not they are like they are today. Back then, they were just crooked guys. And But when you see Jesus, you see Jesus hanging out with the least of these. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one, th one story that just r jumps out to me is, there was a blind beggar who, who uh, sat at the city gates, and yet his, na his name was Beautiful. They a he asked, when Jesus asked him what his name was, he said, my name is Beautiful. I'm like, that's kind of odd. But yet this man was sitting at the, at the gates, and he was a beggar, and he was crippled. He couldn't work because he, he couldn't even move. And yet Jesus saw him, and he healed him. And he said, pick up, your pick up your mat and walk. And when the Pharisees saw um, Jesus do this, do this miracle, this healing, they said, well, isn't today the Sabbath? Why are, you, why are you working on the Sabbath? And he's like, it, he's like if you saw one of your own people, wouldn't, wouldn't you go help somebody in need? I'm like, if, if your house was on fire, let's put it that way. Your house was on fire. Would you say, "I oh, know what? It's my day off. I don't want to work that hard." No, you you would do everything in your power to, to put the fire out. And when Jesus saw this man, he healed him. And yet the people, the Pharisees, couldn't recognize that this because the Pharisees were the ones who kept the law. They 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 had the Old Testament. They were the ones who studied the scriptures to what they had. And yet when they saw the man, Jesus Christ, they couldn't see him for what he was. Because Jesus was the Messiah, the one that was going to offer and fulfill the law of Moses. And that's just a, an amazing thing. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's good. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you look about the incredible amount of fulfillments in the Old Testament. Yeah. And I mean, it's like I once had a friend... Uh, who used to love to quote Isaiah 9, 6, for unto yeah. us a son is given, unto us, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and of the, yeah. and, and of the increase of his government shall be no end. Yeah. And, you know, we're in that right now. We're in that season of the increase of his government that shall have no end. Tim, I yeah. think we're going to do a take a little break, okay. uh, and I'm going to run a little talk about the Internet.
speakingofjesus.tv. So, David, if you call up, is that ready to go? We're going to call up the Internet, and we're going to go over it and just show the homepage. We're going to have to put on my glasses, and, and we'll have a talk about Speaking of Jesus TV. We are a proclamation of the gospel, good news organization. We have a website called speakingofjesus.tv, and on that website, we will have uh, various topics of helps that you can go to. And you can find most any topic about Jesus Christ that you could ask for. Uh, first of all, we say, who Jesus? who is Jesus? What, is, what did he do? And we have a series of videos that address that first question. And then we have other ones that talk about, well, what difference does it make? And we have people who will testify of their trips to hell and seeing visions. We'll talk about people who cover it from a philosophical, theological angle. If you like to... If you're uh, like those intellectual challenges, those kind of professors and people of deep thought are there as well. We have ordinary people every day that uh, uh, come and give their hearts to Jesus and tell their story. And I have an outdated browser that doesn't show up all of the squares, or at least it's refreshing right now. We'll show you the website. We're starting out. We don't have all yeah. of the greatest of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, um, of equipment right now, but we'll get there. So anyway, those are the kind of the things that we're going to be talking about. And we are also allowed, that's available for you 24 hours a day, obviously, seven days a week. We are going live once a month during the nighttime, and we're going to be going once a week, coming very shortly, so that we will have the ability for you to call in, ask your questions, talk about Jesus, and ask us anything you want. And Tim, I hope oh. that you will be a regular on this situation and that you'll come back several times. You know? I'd love to come back. So Yeah, yeah. well, you'll be back. <laughs> and uh, the other thing we got going is that we did an outreach we talked a little bit about earlier where I got to meet you called Love oh, L.A. Yeah, Love L.A. Yeah. Well, what Great I'm going to do is I'm going to run about a, a nine-minute clip. And on that clip, folks, you're going to be able to see just what happened when 300 evangelists met with about, I don't know, a couple hundred intercessors that came together to pray. Yep. And God did some miraculous stuff. When we come back, we're going to talk about some Love L.A. stories. You up for that? Oh, absolutely. Okay, let me roll that reel. Let me put on my glasses, and i got to put these on, find that reel, and we're going to cut to it right now as soon as I can find it. Oh, you know what? I spoke too soon. I didn't even cue the thing up. So, Tim, tell another quick story, and I'm going to get that queued up, and we'll come back to it. Yeah, because we're showing the clips from Love L.A. It was just such a wonderful blessing because um, I live here in Kansas City, so any opportunity, I, I mean, I love Kansas City because this is the place God had called me to be. But anytime I can spend a week in visiting a place I'd never been before, because that was actually my first time to California, and to go to fly into Southern uh, California, spend a, just because it was from Halloween for the, for the next about week or so, I was just ministering every day in the city of, of L.A., and it was just so good to see God break in with power. Many people got healed, saw many salvations. And, and the salvations that I see, some of them were just, just so easy, so natural. It's like these people want to get saved. I mean, I mean, it wasn't even like I was like twisting their arms and saying, you need to repent of your sins. No, it was like, no. Once you understand that there is a loving God who sits above the heavens, and he's the creator of the universe. I mean, they, they, you just naturally want to know more about that. That's Tim, we talked a little bit about how we got to know each other, how I met you and everything. Yeah. But on that, uh, watching that video clip, it brought back some great memories. Yeah, about sure does. What God did and the folks got baptized, the folks yeah. in st street stories. Um, I've got a few street stories, but I'd like to hear one of yours, and I'll share you one of mine. Okay. Give us one. What's, uh, what's on your heart about to share about Love L.A.? And by the way, that was that outreach yeah. in the fall, yeah. seven days uh, 24 yeah. hours a day. Yeah, because it was, we, the first night was Halloween night, and then for the next week, we were sending out teams uh, four times a day, 24 hours a day. Combined, we were combining 24 hours of, of, work, uh, of worship and prayer with 24 hours of evangelism. And every six hours, we were sending teams out to the streets all over L.A. Uh, and one of my favorite places to go was, was in northwest Pasadena. Um, in all my travels, in all my years of walking with Jesus, as I think about that outreach, I'm like, I've never walked into a neighborhood that has been 
so, recept so receptive to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, you know, one thing that, was, that I still remember is before we went into the neighborhood, we had some locals to give us a little bit of a background of what that neighborhood was like. And they were like, it's a little bit, they were warning us that this is a little bit of a rougher na neighborhood with some gang violence and it's just uh, a lot of history of bad things happening there. And they were trying to warn us and saying, just be careful when you go there. Be careful how you approach people. But when, when I walked into that neighborhood, and it wasn't just me, but, but when you walked into the neighborhood, I've never seen so many people that were so receptive to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the most natural conversations I've had. I'm talking about gospel presentations. All I had to do is walk up to somebody and say hello. That was, that's yeah. it. Do you remember that? Oh, I sure do. And Tim, you also yeah. have some stories of the registration line. My Even gosh. at the registration line, I'm like, because I was there. I'm sitting at the registration table, and I was thinking to myself, there's an outreach going on right now, because we were doing 24-7 outreach. And uh, I was like, man, I wish I was out in outreach right now. But instead, I, I, I was sitting there at the registration table. And the registration table, that's where the evangelists go to sign up and get signed in. And even, even there, we had one person from the neighborhood just a block away from this place of 24 hours of worship. And he came in from the neighborhood, and he saw one of the girls that was part of our team, and, and, went, and just he approached her and said, the glory of God is all over you. I can tell just by your spirit that you're a Christian. You love Jesus, and I want what you have. Conviction of sin hit him, that, that, and that's through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that convicts people of their sin, and it convicted him. And I remember that so clearly. And he started this having a conversation, and she's like, talk to my friend Tim over here. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, sir, tell me a little bit of your story. And it was, all I had to do was say hello and ask him, a, I was like, and I was like, just tell me a little bit about yourself. And while he was telling me about himself, it was like, he led himself to the Lord. It was, <laughs> it was, it was all, I, again, all I did is say hello, and then he's like, do you know what? I'm like... Because he, he'd been in church before, but he's like, I haven't been in church in about 10 years. I know I'm, I'm, I got sin in my life. He had some drug issues that he was struggling with. But when I prayed this prayer of salvation prayer, that's, he goes, I've been, he'd been uh, struggling with a drug addiction for 20 years. But when he prayed the prayer of salvation, he was instantly delivered from drug addiction. And when I, and I've done some follow with follow up with that man and he says do you know what that moment that when you prayed that prayer with me the desire for those drugs went completely gone he was complete in a moment this is a man for, who struggled with addiction for 20 years and in a moment he was completely set free and i'm like that's just so amazing that i was even able to be a part of that because it wasn't anything i was saying it was it was the holy spirit it was convicting him, and it, the Holy Spirit was drawing people in, because it goes back to everything I've said before. Because you got to understand that in the heavens there is a Father who sits above this heaven. He sits enthroned, and this is the Creator of the universe, the one who spoke the world into existence, and He desires to have a relationship with us so much, and He desires that relationship so much because He sent His Son to die on the cross. And when I think about some of the other people that I met in L.A., I, I, again, I was out in northwest Pasadena, and I saw these four boys. I was walking down a sidewalk, and they were kind of just sitting down. And uh, they were between the ages of 18 and 20. They had already graduated high school, and they were young men. And I, so I was asked them, what are you doing here today? And they were like, we want to get out of this neighborhood. And we, and I was like, the Lord gave me just some prophetic words and prophetic insights into the life. And I began to make just declarations of, of their lives. And I'm like, the Lord has called you to be a leader. I'm like, you want to get out of this neighborhood because it's, it's pretty natural for men to want to get out of home and go somewhere they've never been before. But I was like, no, the Lord is calling you to be a leader in this neighborhood. And, the, and because... Of, because once you give yourself to salvation of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is going to grow you. The Lord is going to strengthen you. And for these men, I'm like, you're going to become a, lead, a leader here in this neighborhood. 
you want to go somewhere else, but I'm like, I'm like, why would you want to leave Southern California? He's like, the Lord is going to establish you as a leader here in your home neighborhood. And it was so, and, I, and there was four of them, and, I, and the God gave me this, these prophetic words for all four of these boys. And later on when I was doing some follow-up with them, they were just astounded because later on they were like, you know, I've been thinking about what you said, and every single word you've spoken was 100% accurate. And I'm mm. like, that's always good confirmation. Oh, yes. yeah. When I'm like, oh, because I'm, like, I'm like, yes, I like, I nailed it on this one, but I know it was true. I don't know for these, all four of these boy, boys or young men that I spoke to with on that day, all of them, they did business with God. They got their lives right before the Lord. Some of them were already sa saved. Two of them hadn't been saved. But all four of them, they did business with God. They got their lives right before the Lord. And it's the heart posture that you have before the Lord. And when you gain that right perspective, it's just so amazing. And doing this, the work of evangelism was so natural, was so easy. And then I, I, I went over, the, I went from that neighborhood and we went, um, later on that day, I did another outreach where we hopped on these uh, metro trains. And I think it was in the video, but it was, what we did is we got a guitar player and about 12 of us would pile into these little train cars. And once you're on a train, it's like we had 30 minutes where nobody could run away with us because we're all, we're all in the same train car going going somewhere together so we sang like one worship song and then one person one of us would get up and just give a two minute gospel presentation and then another person would give would stand up and give a little testimony about what the lord has done in our lives and then one of those one of those nights when we were doing this we called it metro church because in southern california not everybody has time to go to an actual church building so we said we're going to bring the church to you and we did what we called metro church it's what, it's what I just described. But when we, we did this, I had one guy stand up and said, I have a testimony. And I was like, oh, my, what's going on with you? And he goes, he goes I, I'm a drug dealer. I'm like, I'm on my way right now to, a, to make a drug deal. But it's like, I can't do it anymore. I can't go on. <laughs> oh, praise God. Wow. He, he, he got rid of, he dropped his drugs, and he's like, I surrender my life to Jesus. In a moment, he was saved. In a moment, he was set free from a drug addiction. And we sat down and we started praying for him. And while we were praying for him, we're like, I'm feeling like we're supposed to pray Psalm 90 over you. Hmm. And he looked at us and he's like, Psalm 90. And he's like, you're not going to believe this. He took off his shirt and tattooed to his back was in all the words of Psalm 90. So I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, obviously, this is a prodigal son. This is, mm -hmm. as a young boy, he grew up in the he church. He was on the subway, right? He was on the subway. And he was the guy that they were praying for. Yeah. We had that on the, we showed that on the clip. Sh yeah. It was just yeah, a, yeah. Sh it was a short clip yeah. that on the video, yeah. but I'm telling the full story. Full story, of the, right. The full story that was he was on the subway. He was on his way to make a drug deal. And then while he, in, but in the moment, he had an encounter with the living God. Oh, the, 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 I'm talking about the blood of Jesus that offers yeah. redemption. For right. anybody, regardless yeah. of what your past is, regardless of the things you've done in your life, it doesn't matter. Je Jesus offers redemption for anybody. So in a moment, he got saved. He got set free. And then we, and the beautiful part was with that guy, I, we got, he, that was at the beginning of the outreach. He's like, I'm like, I'm no longer, it's like, I was going to go make drug deals, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to hang out with you guys tonight. He hung out with he, we, uh, we hung out with him for about six hours, and it was just like a, such a sweet, precious time that we got to him for the rest of the night. I mean, I remember at the end of the night, we went out and we got pizza after the outreach was over. And it was just like a sweet moment to, to watch this man to, like recognize that I'm like, man, I, what I've been doing in my life, those things doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. What you guys are doing, which is, which is singing to God, we were singing to Jesus, singing the, the worship songs. We are, we are telling others about Jesus. We are praying for people. We saw people get healed, set free, and delivered. And he's like, I like what you guys are doing. I wanted, I, you guys got something that I want. And it's always such an encouragement to see, especially when you see somebody as radical, to see what the, the sin that he previously was stuck in, and then in a moment, mm. he was set free. 
you know, the, the bondage that was, that was holding them back, the chains were, in a moment, the chains were gone. Okay. The, thing that, the things in this world that were holding them back, because the blood of Jesus that offers redemption for anybody, anything that's holding you back, it, it can all be gone in, in an instant when you surrender your life to Jesus. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, wow. And I'm like, that's just powerful. You know, I, I didn't know the full story on that young yeah. man. Yeah. I remember seeing that tattoo in the video. Yeah. But I didn't know the rest of the story that yeah. you had a chance to share with him, that you had a chance to go out and be with him, yeah. and that you had a chance to tell him tell a story and, and, and acknowledge what. Yeah. Wow. That's a story. That's a story. There. Wow. <laughs> well, I have a yeah. little one. You know, it was like uh, we went down to West Hollywood, and yep. that was, of course, where they have all the gay bars. Yeah. The GLBT community hangs out and mm-hmm. all the glitzy Hollywood type. You know, and we'd see men from you know that be wearing their glitter high heel shoes all the way to just ordinary looking guys but yet we got to talk to one man tim for an hour and a half yeah and you know what he said to us he said you know he said you don't judge us or you don't tell us we're frying and going to hell as your first thing you tell us you know i said and he said you know what i need to tell my story i need to talk i need to you know and he had told his story about how that more than anything he wanted to have a family and he said you know it could be very well too late for me and you know and I, I'm this way and but I really wanted to have kids and a family and we ended up letting him talk for an hour and a half he knew oh, what yeah. we believed in yeah. now, he'd heard it many many yeah. times but what he needed was was someone to come alongside him love on him and yeah. let them speak yeah, and absolutely they, and they were so open I remember I mean, we're talking that. two and three and four in the morning I remember that. And, you know and they were just so incredibly loved kind and open to us and it's not like we didn't share the gospel yeah. or we didn't tell them you know you need jesus yeah. you know but they were just so grateful that someone came down loved on them didn't you know make their first line of you're dry, you're going to hell well you yeah. know i believe that's true of anybody that doesn't give their life yeah. to jesus and that's a horrible reality to stop and think about but yet those folks were open to us and i can only say one thing it was the intercessory prayer of the Absolutely. prayer warriors uh, that uh, and I will tell you a little story because I'm involved in the Love New York uh, yeah. outreach yeah. Uh, that's coming up this fall. I hope you're coming. Well, I'm gonna drag you if you don't. Oh, I, I'm coming. Oh, yeah, you're coming. Everyone's coming back in the room yeah. too. You know. Anyway, but um, one of the things that I learned from uh, the leadership of Love New York, Steve Lugan, uh, with Trinity Works in particular, was how he got on to the Lord using him to understand the reality of what happens when you marry the prayer room or the prayer. Uh, a 24-hour prayer with 24-hour proclamation. He's told the story of the bike rally. Some of you bikers out there may know about this rally in Sturgis, uh, the Dakotas. I think it's South Dakota, North Dakota. Yeah, no, South. South, okay. All Sturgis. Right. Sturgis, South Dakota. It happens once a year, and the town of 5,000 grows to a half a million for, uh, I don't know, how many days a week or so. And many years ago, the Lord told his brother, I want you to grab a pail of water, and I want you to wash bikes, motorcycles, and I want you to proclaim the gospel. So the brother was obedient and did this for some years, and eventually the ministry grew to about 70 people, 7-0, that would be part of that outreach. And, and consistently, Tim, yeah. they would see about two or three people come to know Jesus. Yeah. They would present the gospel or give them literature, offer to pray, and just be there and, and wash their bike for free. That was the ministry. They washed about 1,000 bikes or so. And consistently, that about two or three people give their hearts to Jesus. Well... Steve uh, had been down to the, to the Kansas City House of Prayer and really been rocked by God by seeing all these young people pray and pray with such authority. He said, Lord, what is it? These are like a different species of people. And the Lord said to him in the prayer room, they stand in my presence continually. Yeah. And, they, and that's why they pray with such authority at such a young age and with yeah. such understanding into the ways of God. So his world was rocked a little bit and he went back and, and the Lord told him, I want you to lead up the intercessory prayer for this Sturgis event of your, that your friends do. Yeah. And he said, Lord, um, I, uh, I'm an evangelist, not, a, not an intercessor. He said, well, that's not what I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know better than to question God. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes he wants you to question and build your faith. Other times it's, it's, uh, uh, yeah. you go do that in a discussion. Well, that was one of those times. Yeah. So Steve said, okay. So they got together a prayer room, and I guess they set up a 24-hour prayer presence in the church parking lot in the where they were doing the bike wash well guess what 
70 people gave uh, their hearts to Jesus. So here you have several years of a consistent ministry, right? Yeah. Of only two or three people coming to Christ. Now they go from uh, two to three to 70. Oh. 70. I mean, what's the odds on that? Some of you mathematicians out there can tell us the, uh, how many fold of an increase that is, but, you know, a hundred fold increase would have been from three to six. Yeah. You know, what, 200, uh, uh, six to nine or whatever. But anyway, do the math. Um, and so consistently now they're they you know it inched up a little bit so they're running about 120 to 130 uh, people for about a thousand motorcycles washed oh, wow. so that's 10 13 percent of those who get their motorcycles washed give their hearts to jesus down oh. from two, you know down from two or three. Oh. so then he came to kansas city got with hal inhart and they did a 24-hour th three-day outreach here in kansas yeah. city and I heard some. I wasn't here at the time. I wasn't even. No, I wasn't was here even, either. But the the incredible stories of, of of people out on the street that didn't even know Jesus had open yeah. visions of demons that could see demons on people. Yeah. Pre salvation type of, of events like you know like the kind that Roger Hill spoke of earlier. Yeah. You know where here he is in church and you know he sees this light on his head, opens up his eyes. No light. No spotlight. Close his eyes again. Light again. No light. Close his eyes third time. The light and Jesus is in the light. Yeah. Is that right, Roger? Did I say it accurately? Roger's in our audience back there yeah. holding up the fort for us. So uh, amazing. Yeah. And yet, uh, so we're going to go to New York in the fall. It's good. And uh, I got to do a lot of filming too. So I'll try to catch some outreaches. But you know, the fun part about it is doing these reconnaissance missions. Oh, yeah. Because we get to lead people to Jesus just going to our meetings, That's going to the subway, start sharing the Lord, you know? Yeah. So and good. so I'm around kind of people that are like Tim Flanker, yeah. you know, and it's great, and it's great inspiration for me. So it we've is. got to come in this fall. New York, you have an appointment with Jesus. Yes, you do. You do. Minneapolis in, in June. In June. 24-7. You have an appointment with Jesus yeah. and a city coming to near you. So if you're an evangelist out there, by the way, again, our whole focus is for if you don't know Jesus, those lanes that you see in that ticker below the screen that gives the, the, the number for you to do a video call. And those lanes are for you. But if you are a believer and you're watching this, then you might want to consider enjo uh, joining us for Love New York 247. The, the uh, Love New York 247 website will be up soon. I'm speaking as of March 7th. And so very shortly yeah. that should be up. Okay. Tim. Yes. We're coming near the end of our segment. Coming in for a landing. It's just flying right past. It see? is. It's when, like, we, when I start talking about Jesus, I'm like, time stops and everything doesn't matter anymore. Because I'm like, as I think about the beauty and the worth of Jesus, I'm like, it's just that unceasing, unstopping thing that consumes my mind. And I just love him so much. I love sharing Jesus, you know, with, with so many people. So, well, yeah, we'll have this, this, you know, we'll, this will be on live stream. People can oh, tune yeah. in this anytime. We'd love you to tune in and talk now. Yeah. But it's wee hours in the morning here, and yeah. some people are not awake, but we are having a great time regardless. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to go to New York, Tim? Yes. You are. You're planning on it. I'll, I'll be there. Oh, you'll be there. I'll, I'll be there. We're fans much about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You couldn't, we couldn't hold you back if we wanted to. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, going to Minneapolis? I'll be in Minneapolis, too. All right. Where are you not going, bro? <laughs> 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 You're not you, going. <laughs> you know, but, but truthfully, you know, as I think about tonight, I mean, I, ha I had two offers to go to two other cities. I won't say their names, but I was like, I did get offers to go to other cities. But it's like, Lord, I, I asked myself that question of, Lord, where do you want me to go? Holy Spirit, send me to the places that you want to send me. And I, cause I, pray for my, I pray for my hands. I pray for my feet. I pray for the words that I speak. I pray for my ears. I pray that, Lord, I'm like, allow my ears to listen to the things that you want me to listen to. Pray for my feet. And I say, oh, Lord, take my feet to the places where you want them to go. And allow my feet to not go to the places where they don't need to go. I pray for my hands and say, Lord, you created these hands. I ask that everything that the, my hands touch, that it would prosper. Anything I'm working on, I'm like, Lord, allow things to grow and allow things to come forth. Just by the, by the power of your Holy Spirit. So I'm like, even this week, I mean, today's March 7th, we're, we're filming this, but... I had two op I had two offers to be in two other cities. I'm in Kansas City right now, the city in which by calling that's where I live right now, uh, because I love Jesus so much and I had like opportunities to speak here. But I was like, Lord, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? And he's like, No, I want you to be here this week. I'm like, I want you I need you to be here in Kansas City, and because I st I was obedient to the Lord. I mean, just in the past seven days, 
I'm like I share Jesus all the time, but I'm like I've seen people healed. I I was able to minister to people. I I talked. I'm like even last night when I when I talk, I think about that man that was sitting out front of a bar. He was down on the sidewalk, and I'm like, nobody else would have spoken a word to that guy, but I stopped, and I I just shared the love of God with him, and I'm like, and I know if I didn't, nobody else would have. So I mean, it's just one of those things where you like. Holy Spirit, where do you want me to go? Right. What What do you want me to say? So, anyways, you know, and that's 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 a pretty sobering yeah. point. You know, when you think about that, you know, um, because honestly, sometimes you are it. Yeah, there isn't another person in the wings. Yeah, and you know, I think of that passage. I think it's in Ezekiel where he said that I looked for someone who would intercede for these people, yeah. but I found none. So therefore, I, I must destroy this. Yeah. You know, the land. And, and 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 think about that. That's pretty sobering. I uh, I know that in my life I've I've had uh, some opportunities that I've I've mopped and I wonder, yeah. Lord, was that it for that person? Yeah. You know, and that's not the kind of position we want to no, be in, is it? It's you know. But like also growing it like for me because because I am an evangelist. It's, as I grow in my identity before the Lord, it's it's sometimes it's like every now when it, when it comes to the listen listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Every now and then, you need to miss it. You got to understand, to like, back in the day, we had radios or like in your car, you got your car radio, and you got to dial in the right frequency to hear the, to, to get the radio just working just, just right. You got to find the right station and tune in the dial. And listening to the Holy Spirit is the right, is the same way. In order to hear the voice of the Lord, there are days when you got to miss it. And some, I'm like, and I'm like, there are days when I'm like, I walk past a person and I don't stop to pray for them. But it's like, as I grow in my knowledge of God and mm-hmm. I practice listening for the, for the voice of the Holy Spirit, you just become better at, in walking in obedience with the Lord and saying, which one do you want me to talk to today? I'm like, which, do, I'm like am I in the correct city or do I need to travel somewhere else? You know, and it's, it's just that constant relationship that I have with my heavenly Father, and say, because when I go back to the, the Bible and I read the Gospels, Jesus he he became a man, but yet he was so dependent upon having a relationship with his heavenly Father. And in the Gospels, he he calls he just says, "My Father." I, I'm like, I only do what I see my I see my Father doing. And Jesus would often get alone. He would go away from the twelve disciples. He would get alone and he would pray and he would say, "Lord, today I ask, where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to talk to?" And when the like when the crowd would get to grow too large, that's when Jesus would be like, "Like you don't need me here. I need to go where my name is not known. Mm. I, I, I like the crowd is too many people in this town know who I am. I need to go to the town where nobody knows who I am." And I need to speak to the least of these, because that's where you, you find the kingdom of God. And, you know, yeah. and I, said, I think about that, I'm like, God is just so good. Yeah. 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 And it's really fruitful ground in some of the least of these places. It is. You know, and it says that those who are poor in this world should be rich, in, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you think about that, the last shall be first and the first shall be last yeah. and the meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah. Control uh, strength, you know. Yeah. I mean, because because when you say that say, statement to me, that is a very sobering statement. When Jesus said, "The meek shall inherit the earth," I'm like, "Wow." Some people say, "Well, it's a meek small, is not weak." Yeah, meek is not weak. But I'm like, when you say the meek shall inherit the earth, some people like that. It's, it, one expression is, "It's a, it's a small world, but I would hate to paint it." Because when you, I'm like, because sometimes that's good. I never heard that one before. It's a small world, but I'd hate to paint it. Yeah. Okay, I, I hear you. I don't think it's enough paint. Out there. Yeah. But it's it says the, the meek is, well shall shall inherit the earth, and I'm like, what does that mean? What does that look like? It, it's a picture of taking the low road and walking with lowliness and humbleness. And as I grow in my identity in the Lord, it's growing as being a servant. Mm. I mean, because I'm like, Lord, I want to be a leader in your army. And he's like, do you want to lead people? Okay, you're going to mm-hmm. serve people. You need to take the low low road. You need to humble yourself. Consider yourself the least of these. and Because t- that's, the, that's what Jesus did when he did his earthly ministry. 
you know, because when I think about leadership and when I think about how should I do my, my ministry here on earth, mm-hmm. I look at, at the example of Jesus and I'm like, what, what did Jesus do? Yeah. What was he doing when he was on the earth? When he was in full-time ministry, what, what did it look like when he spent time with the, the dis- disciples? Because he could have been just out evangelizing all day, all night, but he didn't do it by, by himself. He grabbed 12 men and said, I'm like, I need 12 guys with me. Because I'm like, I'm only going to be here for a short time. But after I go, you guys need to carry on the, the, the message of the gospel. And after I go, I'm like, you need to have men in your life. And you always need to be training more, making more disciples. Because it's like, because it's what I do as, when I do my work of evangelist. My calling is not just to see conversions. My, my job is not to have somebody make a decision. My real job is to make disciples. Jesus made disciples. The disciples of, just, of Jesus made disciples. And it's, we, need to be, we need to be people who are making disciples, who will make disciples, who will make disciples. And there's a multiplication factor that we don't even comprehend this side of heaven. But when we go to, but when we do go to heaven, and we and the, at, at the end of the age when all things are exposed, and we see like our fruit that we labor, because I'm like we we see in part this side of eternity, but mm-hmm. once we go into the heavenly place, and we get in, I'm like no, I'm like those weak and broken words, those seeds that I planted that I'm like. I, I plant seeds all the time, and the majority of the seeds I plant, I'm like, I never see the fruit of those, of those labors this side of heaven. But on the other side, when I'm in eternity, when I'm in the glory cloud that is the, the heavenly place, that's when you see all the fruit of your labors. And when you realize the eternal reward that's waiting for us on the, in the heavens, in the heavenly places... Then you're like, man, I, I wish I would have planted more seed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Well, Tim. Yes. You know, my thoughts going uh, along the line of this. You know, people are watching. Yeah. And we ought to just stop and pray for them. Yeah, we should. And I'll, I'll start us out. And maybe you can finish this out. Okay. Lord Jesus... I just ask you to touch people's lives, that they will open their hearts to you right now, that they will give their lives to you, that they will taste and see that you are good, and that they will be able to forgive those who have hurt them and realize that once they are set free, they can be free indeed. They don't have to be bitter. I pray, Lord, for uh, those who have been uh, deeply abused and are bitter right now and, and Say, God, if you were real, how could such and such happen to me? I just pray, Lord, right now that you soften their hearts, Father, and that you give them new life, Lord, and that they'll give their hearts to Jesus. Tim, what would you want to say to somebody right now that is contemplating going and giving their hearts to Jesus right now? Say, if you've never talked to, to God before, you've got to understand that prayer is not for the super saints. It's for the weak and broken. Gotta understand that I am a I'm a small, I'm a weak, I'm a broken person. When I view when I view the very God, the creator of all things. So so if you're out there right now and you're like, I'm kinda of on the fence, I'm like, I hear some of the words that you've been talking about, but I'm like, I'm not sure if I want to go all the way. I want to encourage wherever you're at, whatever's going through your mind right now, it, it, prayer is not for the super saints, it's not for People who have their theology, their theology just intact. It's for the weak ones. It's for the broken. It's for the small. It's for the humble. And so uh, you could pray a prayer something like, uh, like this. Just say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, come with power. Welcome, Holy Spirit. God, if you're real, show yourself to me. So many people deal with doubt and unbelief. They think about their own lives, and they're like, I'm like, if there is a creator of the uni- universe, why would he want to talk to me? There, there's over 7 billion people on this planet. I, I was talking to one guy recently, and he's like, how do, you, how do you know that I'm not just a number? 
there's over seven billion of us on this planet. He's like, he's like, and when you look at society, you go, he said to me, I feel like a number. And I'm like, you're not just a number. You're a name. You're a person. The creator of the universe, he knows you uniquely and specially. You know, the scripture says that when he looks at us, he says he, cal- he knows the number of hairs on our heads. And I look at that number and I go, who cares how many hairs I have in my head? But the Bible says, no, I, the Lord, I know how, many, how much hair you have on your head. I, I set you apart. I, I've known you before the creation of the world. I, I love you. I love you so much that I sent my son, Jesus, t- to die on a cross. And it's the blood of Jesus that was spilled on that day. And it's the blood of Jesus that offers redemption. And our Heavenly Father desires to have relationship uniquely with each and every person. Every person that was born, every person that's alive today, and every person that's going to be alive until the end of the age. He desires to have a relationship. He is a big God, and He knows everybody. He knows us by your, by your name, and He loves us so much. Man, it's just good. I'm like, whenever I think of that, I'm like, man, that's good news. You know, <laughs> in the, the chapter of Corinthians, yeah. where Paul said, the love chapter, the famous love chapter, yeah. He said, these three things remain. Yeah. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Yeah. And, you know, how does hope remain and how does faith remain forever? We're never exhaust the yeah. wonders of God's love and his beauty and his all who he is. Yeah. That will be with us Tim, for all eternity. Yeah. And never ending exhausting yeah. aspect of God's grace and mercy. Yeah. One of the things that I, lo- I, I, mean, I love to do this so much that I do this all the time. I mean, it's one of the things that really fills my life with joy. And it's the privilege of praying for people. And so what I, what I want to do right now as we close out my time here on this show is I just want to pray for people, anybody watching. If, you, if you're at home right now, if you're tuning this in and trying to figure out what these guys are talking about and what's going on here, like I'm just going to pray for you. Because when I, when I talk to God, I'm talking to the creator of the universe. And there's power that is found through the, power, through the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read a quick verse. It says, John 6, verse 63. This is Jesus speaking, and it says, It is the Spirit who gives life, and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. So I want to pray for anybody that's at home right now, if you're watching this. Just open your ears and receive what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life right now. Because the, the words of Jesus, they are spirit and they are life. So Jesus, I love you so much. Jesus, I love you so much. Lord, allow the love of God to come down from heaven and wash over people all over the, the earth. Because you desire, for out of all the things in all the created order, you desire to have a relationship with your people. Mm-hmm. And you love us so much. And I pray right now that the blood of Jesus would wash and renew minds. And I pray that people at home, from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, they'd be washed completely by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that offers redemption. The blood of Jesus that offers forgiveness of our sins. I pray that you would bring uh, conviction of sin in people's lives. So that would lead them to repentance. So that they would believe in Jesus Christ. And for people that are already saved, I pray that they would get water baptized. That they would grow in the things of God. That they would grow in righteousness and holiness, Lord. Jesus, I love you so much. I ask for wisdom and revelation. I ask for the United States of America. I say the blood, I allow the blood of Jesus to wash the America. I say all of America shall be saved. Jesus, we need you so much. Send a new reality of how much God loves us, Lord. Jesus, I love you. Allow others to see the true, kind God who is great in mercy, 
abounding in love, and give grace to anybody who, who asks for it, Lord. I pray that today many people, I pray that salvation would spring up from the ground naturally, just abundantly, all over the United States, Lord. I pray that today would be the day of salvation. Jesus, I ask for souls. I ask that souls would be saved right here in, in these United States. And then take it all over the world to every tongue, every tribe, every nation, that every knee shall bow from, heaven, from the heavens above to those on the earth and even below the earth, that every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, allow the blood of Jesus, the blood that offers redemption. I ask that many souls will be saved today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Tim. Yes. Thank you. And you out there, if you prayed that for the first time, go on to speakingofjesus.tv and you can send us an email at info at speakingofjesus.tv. You need some prayer. We have prayer people that are assigned to pray for you. Go to prayer at speakingofjesus.tv. So we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And Tim, thank you oh, for yes. sharing life with us, sharing your stories, sharing yes. your experiences, your long-seated love for Jesus that's been there since a child, mm -hmm. and how you and what motivates you to do yeah. what you do and be who you are. Yeah. I thank you so much.